Here's example eight uh, with trig identities. So this one, uh, actually I actually want to do this one two different ways. So first of all, uh, let's read it. So cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta equals sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta. Okay, so we'll go back to our um, <clears throat> general process here we talked about in an earlier video. So always start on one side, try to make it look like the other side. Oh, and again, by the way, if you want a copy of all this stuff to follow along with, uh, check the video description. There's a link in there. You can use that link to uh, get all this stuff here. Okay, so um, anyway, always start on one side, try to make it look like the other side. And generally, you'll start with the side containing the more complicated expression. So if we look here, cosecant to theta minus cotangent of theta and sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta. So this left side is just a subtraction, but the right side has addition and division. So the right side's a little more complicated, so let's start with the right side. Now, some people might argue that, well, the right side is only sine and cosine, but the left side is cosecant and cotangent, which are a little more complicated. Some people might argue that, um, or they just might want to start on the left side anyway. So you can actually also start on the left side if you want. So what we're going to do here with example eight is first we'll start on the right side and show that it equals the left side. And that's good enough, that's it, that would be it for example eight. But also, I wanna do it another way and I wanna, with the second way, I wanna start on the left side and show that it equals the right side. Okay, so I just wanna show that, I just wanna emphasize that there are multiple ways to approach trig identity problems, uh, sometimes anyway. And um, plus, if we do it both ways, then it'll be helpful to point out uh, examples of some of these steps to use, okay? So, let's start on the left, or sorry, let's start on the right and make it look like the left. So, <clears throat> sine of theta divided by one plus cosine of theta, okay? Okay, now what do we do here? Okay, we wanna make it look, or we wanna show that it equals cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta, and there's nothing really obvious to do, but uh, one thing I wanna point out is that when you're faced with something like this and you don't know where to go next, uh, and what I mean by something like this is, you know, you have one thing on top or on the bottom, then on the other side, in this case on the bottom, you have uh, something plus a trig function. So what we can do, and it may not always work, but what we can do is multiply the top and the bottom by that same something minus that trig function. Okay. So it's actually similar to uh, rationalizing the denominator. Okay, that's, uh, that phrase does not apply here because these are trig functions, we're not rationalizing anything, so to speak, but it's the exact same concept. Okay, so if you want to rationalize a denominator, if you have like, uh, say, 2 over 1 plus root 3, okay, then what you do is you multiply the top and the bottom by 1 minus root 3, okay, uh, so that you can rationalize the denominator and you continue from there and so on, okay. So it's, uh, even though we're technically not rationalizing anything here, it's the exact same mathematical principle. Okay, here's something divided by 1 plus a thing. Well, hey, let's try and simplify this by multiplying by 1 minus that thing, okay. So will that work? Uh, in this case, yeah, it will, spoiler alert. Uh, but it may not always work, okay, but it's something to try. And it's actually, um, since it's kind of hard to express what this is in words, because it's not exactly rationalizing, uh, it's not on this general process here. But if you want to make a note of that, it is something that you might want to try. So we can just be careful, it's not really rationalizing. It's like rationalizing, it's sort of the same process, but um, here we call this rationalizing because square root of 3 is an irrational number. So if you add 1 to it, it's still irrational. So we take this irrational number in the denominator and rationalize it by doing this, okay? But here, nothing is irrational here, okay? That's, that term does not apply here. So even though the mathematical principle is the same, it's not rationalizing because we're not taking anything irrational and making it rational like we are here. Anyway, uh, details aside there. So let's continue with this. So this is sine of theta on top times 1 minus cosine of theta. So let's not distribute. It might be tempting to distribute. Let's leave it factored for now, because we can always distribute later if we need to. But maybe we won't need to. And then what happens on the bottom? Uh, we have 1 plus cosine of theta times 1 minus cosine of theta. So if we FOIL, just like we did in example 7, we can FOIL this. So it's going to be first is 1, outer minus cosine theta, inner plus cosine theta. So the outer and inner cancel, just like we expect them to. Okay, and then last, minus cosine squared of theta. Okay, so this is really just a slightly more complicated version of something like this. Remember, a plus b times a minus b, that's a squared minus b squared. So uh, 1 plus cosine of theta times 1 minus cosine of theta. Okay, so that's just going to be first thing squared. So, okay, so instead of a, we have 1, so it's 1 squared. And instead of b, we have cosine of theta. Okay, so cosine squared of theta. 1 squared is just the same thing as 1. Yeah, but again, if you want to FOIL it out, so you can show all the steps like we did in example seven. And um, we're going to be kind of tight for room here, so let's just come down here and do it. 
So uh, one plus cosine of theta, oops, times one minus cosine of theta. Okay, so if you want to show all the steps with foiling, first gives you one outer minus cosine of theta, inner uh, plus cosine of theta, last minus cosine squared of theta. Okay, so minus cosine theta plus cosine theta, those cancel. And just like we expect, we have one minus cosine squared of theta left. Okay, so that's what we have here. Okay, now uh, there are a few different ways to approach this. So one way to approach this is, uh, well actually there's really maybe only one thing to do here at this step. Um, so what we can do is use the fact that one minus cosine squared of theta, that is the same thing as, uh, so first of all on the top is still the same, but on the bottom, one minus cosine squared of theta, that is the exact same thing as sine squared of theta. Okay, that comes from the uh, Pythagorean identity here. Okay, so what we did, we just manipulated this uh, using the exact same principle, uh, exact same logic we used in example four. Okay, so in example four, we did this exact same thing. Um, one minus cosine squared of theta is sine squared of theta. In example four, we showed why that's true and we explained why it's okay to do that. Okay, so if sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is one, that's the exact same thing as saying one minus cosine squared of theta is sine squared of theta. Okay, so just take this, subtract cosine squared from both sides. And it's okay to do that because this is an established identity, okay? We're not trying to establish this identity, so we can work on both sides here, right? But when you're establishing an identity, only work on one side, okay? Always start on one side and just try to make it look like the other side. So um, here we have to stick on one side, but with an established identity, we can manipulate both sides to our will um, to make it look, uh, or to make it more useful to us. And that's what we do here. Okay, so sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is one. Subtract cosine squared of theta from both sides. So then one minus cosine squared of theta equals sine squared of theta. But again, the exact same logic we use in example four. Uh, anyway, now let's, this is good because we can simplify this. Okay? So okay, if you're wondering, how do we know to do that? Well, there's really not much else to do with that step. Um, sine of theta times one minus cosine of theta. Well, we can distribute that, but that won't really get us anywhere. So what we can look at this, and we can look at the bottom and say, okay, here's a one, here's a cosine squared of theta. Are those related somehow? And we can look at this and say, okay, here's a cosine squared of theta, here's a one. Okay, they're related by that, how could we use that? And then we subtract cosine squared from both sides so that it's sine squared of theta equals one minus cosine squared of theta, which is exactly what we have. So that's how we would want to think about that there, is just look at what we have and ask ourselves, okay, does that look like anything we know, any of the more basic identities that we know? <clears throat> and if it looks like it, how can we manipulate those basic uh, previously established identities to, uh, to help us? And that's exactly what we did here. Now, what's good is we can cancel. Okay, so sine of theta on top, sine squared on the bottom. So uh, this cancels with one of these down here. So the squared goes away on the bottom. And what we're left with is one minus cosine of theta on top and sine of theta on bottom. Okay. So now, uh, what's happening? Well, what do we want to be? We want to eventually get to cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. So we want to have one thing minus another thing. Well, here's a minus sign. Okay, so we're maybe heading in the right direction. Now let's split this guy up into two fractions. Why? Well, what else, uh, what else is there to do really? Okay, we have one minus cosine theta on top and sine of theta on the bottom. So we're just gonna try and split it up into two fractions, see where that gets us. One over sine of theta minus cosine of theta over sine of theta. Okay, what is one over sine of theta? Uh, one over sine of theta is cosecant of theta, right? And hopefully something we uh, definitely wanna have memorized. So that is cosecant of theta. And then cosine of theta oh, divided by sine of theta, also something we definitely want to know, but it's equal to uh, cotangent of theta. And if we look, uh, so what we have cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta, and that's exactly what we wanted, right? So we just started with the right-hand side and we uh, showed that it equals the left-hand side. So that's it, that's good, that's it for example eight. So that's really all we'd have to do. But like I said, uh, I want to do this one two different ways just to show that there are multiple ways to approach this. Um, to approach trig identity problems, generally speaking, and uh, <clears throat> there are some other things I want to point out here. Okay, so here we started with the right and show that it equals the left. Now, uh, completely forget all this. Now what we're going to do is do this a completely different way. Start with the left, show that it equals the right. Okay, okay so let's start with cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. Okay, but again, if you had to do a problem like this for a homework or a quiz or a test or whatever, um, then just, you know, establish it one way is fine. Unless the directions say, you know, start on both or start on one side and make it look like the other, and then do it again with the other side. 
Uh, that'd be kind of weird, but I guess possible. Um, anyway, so I just, there's just a couple of the things I want to point out here. So if we go back the other way, um, there are some other ways to think about it going back the other way. And there are some other things to point out with these steps here. So that's why I just want to do this a uh, separate way. Okay, so um, cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. Well, we want to make that eventually equal to sine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. So let's take this guy and rewrite it in terms of sines and cosines. Okay, because eventually we want to be at an expression that has sine and cosine. So let's, uh, okay, let's just first rewrite this with sines and cosines, see if that gets us anywhere. So cosecant of theta, we already know that that's 1 over sine of theta. And then minus cotangent, well cotangent is cosine of theta over sine of theta. Okay, just uh, ignore that. It's bump the pencil on the paper at uh, the beginning of example 7. Anyway, um, continuing with this, so what do we have here? We have a common denominator, sine of theta, so let's squish this guy into one fraction. So what we have is 1 minus cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. Okay. Now here, this is really what I want to point out, is at this step, um, okay, we have 1 minus cosine theta over sine of theta, and we want to show that it equals sine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. Okay, so it's not really obvious what to do next, but there are a couple different ways to think about it. We can think about it the same way we thought about this here, where we said, okay, I'm not sure what to do here, so if I have 1 plus cosine of theta, let's multiply by 1 minus cosine of theta, right? That's one thing we could do. So here we have 1 minus cosine of theta, so let's try and multiply by 1 plus cosine of theta on top and bottom. Yeah, this is on the top instead of the bottom now, but it doesn't matter at all. Okay, it's just something to try. But here now, there's another way to think about it. Okay, so one of these other steps is keep your goal in mind related to that multiply by 1 or add 0 in a useful way. So now we can, uh, this is a really great example of this kind of step here. So keep your goal in mind. What is our goal? Our goal is to end up with sine of theta over 1 plus cosine of theta. Okay, what do we have? We have 1 minus cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. So we want sine of theta on the top and a 1 plus cosine of theta on the bottom. Okay, so keep our goal in mind and related to that, multiply by 1 in a useful way or add 0. Okay, but here we're going to multiply by 1. Okay, so our goal is to have a 1 plus cosine of theta on the bottom. So, hey, let me just put that. 1 plus cosine of theta, I'm just going to put that on the bottom. Well, to make this okay, I have, uh, I have to put it on the top also. Okay, so that's sort of what this step is getting at. Keep your goal in mind. So know where you want to go just by looking at the problem you were given. Okay, so I know I eventually want to be here with sine of theta on top, 1 plus cosine of theta on bottom. Okay, so, well, hey, if I want a 1 plus cosine of theta on bottom, I'm just going to put it on the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to multiply that right in there. Well, to make that okay, I have to multiply that same thing on the top. And hey, what is that? That's multiplying by 1 in a useful way. Okay, because this divided by itself, that's 1. So we're just multiplying this whole thing by 1 in a useful way. Okay, so that's really what the step is getting at. Just uh, look at where you want to go, put it in there, okay, and uh, make sure you do the same thing to the top and bottom if you do something like that. Okay. So again, this won't always work, okay? And uh, maybe if you don't like thinking about that, you can also just think of it like we did here. Yeah, well, here's a one plus cosine of theta. Let me toss in a one minus just to see if that works. Okay, that's also what we did here. Here's a one minus. Let me toss in a one plus to see if it works. Okay, so a couple of ways to think about it, but the exact same uh, math going on here, uh, no matter how we think about it. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, let's foil on the top. So one minus cosine of theta times one plus cosine of theta. It's exactly what we had when we foiled this, doing it the other way. So on the top, we just have 1 minus cosine squared of theta. And on the bottom, what do we have? Uh, sine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta. Okay. okay, so here's our 1 plus cosine of theta we wanted, but we're not quite there yet. Okay, well here, uh, now, 1 minus cosine squared of theta, we already talked about that a couple times, once in this video, once for example, 4, I think. Uh, 1 minus cosine squared of theta, that is sine squared of theta. Okay, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. Okay. So we have sine squared of theta on top, and then on the bottom, sine of theta times the quantity 1 plus cosine of theta. Okay, so again, don't distribute here. So, um, you know, don't distribute here. Uh, you can if you want, but you're probably going to have to end up undoing it later. <clears throat> it's probably safest just to keep it uh, in a factor form like this. Don't distribute because you can always distribute later uh, if you need to, but generally speaking, you may not need to. Anyway, what's next? Sine squared on top, sine on the bottom. This one goes away, this squared goes away. So what we're left with is sine of theta on top and a one plus cosine of theta on bottom. 
and that's exactly what we wanted. So we started with the left-hand side, and we showed that it equals uh, the right-hand side. Okay. So just, uh, again, want to do this one two different ways to show that, you know, it's, uh, you won't always have to start on maybe just one side. So you can, well, you always should. Uh, so let me rephrase that. Always start on one side, try to make it look like the other side. But um, my point is that there isn't always just one side that will work. Okay, so sometimes you can pick the left or the right. Okay, but again, no matter which side you pick, just start, stay on that side, manipulate only that side. Okay, don't mess around with the other side. Leave the other side completely alone. Okay, but in this case, in example eight, um, we could start on either the left or the right. Okay, with example seven in the previous video, uh, if we start on the right-hand side, it really would not be obvious where to go from there. Okay, and, um, and we can look at this and kind of manipulate it a little bit, but it's just, it's unnatural to start with something so simple and to make it look so complicated. It's doable, but unnatural. Okay, so here, you know, these are both fairly complicated. This one has a quotient, but this one is also kind of a quotient behind the scenes because it's one over sine of theta, cosine of theta over sine of theta. So some people might argue that maybe this one's more complicated, some might argue this is more complicated, but it doesn't actually matter because what we just showed is that you can start on uh, the left or the right, work only on that side that you chose, and then you can make it look like the other side. Okay. Uh, one last thing I want to point out, when we did this step here, um, we use this fact, keep your goal in mind related to this, multiply by one or add zero in a useful way. So that's what we did here. We said, okay, I have this, one minus cosine of theta over sine of theta. I want to have this, sine of theta over one plus cosine of theta. Okay. So let's toss in the one plus cosine of theta. Let's just toss that in there and see where that gets us. Okay. So you might be wondering, well, I also want a sine of theta on top, so why didn't I toss that in here on the top? So um, you could do that. You'd end up with sine of theta on top, sine of theta on bottom. Then you'd have uh, sine squared on the bottom, and then sine of theta on top. And then sine squared becomes one minus cosine squared. And um, <clears throat> you'd kind of end up going in circles a little bit. You'd have to factor and simplify and cancel. And it is, it's actually possible to do it that way. Um, but if you put in the sine over sine instead of one plus cosine over one plus cosine, um, it's still totally doable, but it's gonna be maybe two or three extra steps. Um, so again, we use the step that said, keep our goal in mind related to that, multiply by one or add zero in a useful way. So what we said was, okay, well, I want one plus cosine on the bottom, so let me just put it there. Well, if I do that, I have to put it on the top also, so then we simplify it after that, okay? Now, you might also wonder, well, hey, I want a sine on the top, so can I just put it there? Yeah, sine on top, sine on bottom. You can put it there, uh, simplify, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it will work, but it's, again, two or three extra steps, maybe. So that's why we didn't do it this way in the video, but it is completely doable. If you want to do it like that, that's fine. Um, just want to point out that it's, a few extra steps, so we'll try and take the simpler route. So anyway, two different ways of doing example eight. Uh, really three different ways if you count the sign, putting the sign is set as a different way than this, and it is a little bit different. Um, so a few different ways of doing one example here. And again, that's the nice thing about trig identities is often there's more than one way to approach it. So that's example eight, example nine coming up next.